After working on high-stake projects with budgets of thousands of dollars, I've learned that architectural decisions matter, even when many people claim they don't. So today I want to tell you my thoughts about the simplest architectural pattern that helped me handle those big projects, Model View Controller. As a developer, you've likely heard this term before. Some see it as an over-engineering of and feeling that there's no time for it in their project. Others love it, while some don't understand what it is all about. So in this material, I will discuss the basic ideas that play a role here. Welcome back and let's get started. Straight to the point, this material is intended to the aspiring software engineers who want to improve the efficiency of the projects and prepare themselves for more demanding projects and technologies. While that's a simple architectural pattern, having a basic experience in developing coding solutions will be highly beneficial. If you need some help, I insist you to check out the material about the procedural and object-oriented coding style that I've created some time ago, since it provides a great insight about the problems that the pattern that we discussed today can solve too. And what I will present here is my basic understanding of the MVC pattern. I'm aware that maybe I'm wrong, but if so and you see that I'm wrong, let me know in the comments what is wrong. I will be pleased to hear your thoughts and make my process uh, more efficient too. What is the MVC pattern? It is a widely used architectural pattern that divides an application into three logically connected and separated layers. Each layer has its specific role with clear boundaries between each other, which helps maintain a correct data flow through the application. It's probably the simplest one and that's why it's worth to know it well. The first is the model. It represents the application data and the business logic, defines the main object and their relationships uh, within the app, defines business rules, performs data related operations like fetching or saving the data and provides the results for other layers. That's the most important part since it defines what your application actua actually does. The next one is the view layer. It represents the application interface, it takes care of presenting the data in the user-friendly form so it defines how does the application looks, so we talk about HTML or CSS for example, and what interactions the user can perform, so let's say that we talk about HTML and JavaScript. It communicates directly with the user, takes the input and passes it to the controllers to run the specific actions that are defined in the mod. The third part is a controller. It represents a bridge between a view and the application business logic. It accepts requests from the view, verifies them and talks with the model through its interface to change the application state. It performs actions or get the necessary data and sends the received results back to the view. We will explore more examples later. It should be already clear that this separation makes the process more efficient. For example, front-end developers can focus on the view without getting engaged in the complexities of the back-end model. Similarly, back-end developers can focus on back-end details without needing to engage with the front-end aspects. Sounds hard? Let's think about this like a uh, restaurant experience. The waiter sets up the table for a client who want to eat and brings a menu for them to explore their options. The client informs the waiter of their choice so the waiter can head to the kitchen and hands over the order to the chief, who starts cooking. After a while, the chief hands over the meal to the waiter who then brings it to the client's table. What are the roles here? The model is the kitchen managed by the chief. It accepts the order from the waiter and takes care of preparing the meal. The next layer is the view, so it is a guest room in the restaurant. A nice looking environment with tables where clients can sit, order a meal and enjoy eating. And the third one, controller. The waiter who sets up the tables, takes and verifies the client orders, passes them back to the chief and brings the ready meal back to a client. And this is the most common workflow used in many restaurants. Is it ideal? <laughs> I wouldn't say so, since clients sometimes have a different needs. Is it efficient? Absolutely. To prove this, let's imagine potential problems caused by incorrect data flow in a restaurant. The first example is breaking the data flow. Can the client go directly to the kitchen to make an order? They can, but the chief probably won't be happy about having to talk uh, to, uh, to a guest. The next one is uh, breaking a separation. Should the kitchen stop working fine when the vase breaks in the guest room? Not really, since it's not their problem. They should still work fine. The next one is, for example, 
performing forbidden actions. Can the clients try to order meals that are not in the menu? They can, but if it's not controlled, it might lead to issues. I know that I could provide more examples, but by now you should see how important correct data flow is in many aspects of life. Just as you as a chief would work more efficiently if you could focus on cooking rather than serving customers. The data layers works better when it doesn't have to deal with talking directly to the users. You can use the restaurant analogy as a model and build your own stories in other contexts, for example development. So let's replace the previous story with the new variables. The controller renders a view for a user who wants to interact with the app and provides an interface to explore the options. User makes a request so the controller can head the model layer and asks for a data which makes a magic inside, for example, makes a SQL queries. After a while, the model passes the response to the controller that updates the view. I believe we don't need to describe layers here since it should be clear that each has a specific purpose. So let's analyze the potential problems when the MVC rules are not followed. For example, when everything is integrated in one place, let's say about the WordPress functions PHP 5. The first problem is breaking the data flow. Can the view make direct SQL queries? It can, but there is a risk of problems when the infrastructure detail changes, for example from SQL to REST API database. The front-end developers will have to deal with this change and all the further occurrences. The next thing is the breaking a separation. Should the not notification mailing system, which is defined in the model layer, stop working when the form component breaks on the front-end? Not really, since it should impact only the view. It's better to break one thing rather than the entire system. The next thing is performing forbidden actions. So, can the view perform actions without verifying business rules? For example, sending an email only as a registered uh, user? It can, but it will make the app not compliant with the client's requirements. Controllers should verify them. Of course, those issues don't always occur. If you are a solo and all-in-one developer working on a simple 20 hours project, you likely won't encounter those problems. However, in larger projects that require hundreds or even thousands of hours, this separation of roles becomes uh, crucial. In such scenarios, having a front-end developer working on the back-end mechanism can be a big problem and slow down the development process. The concepts discussed here are stack agnostic, meaning that they can be applied regardless of the technology used. But to illustrate the basic ideas, I will create a simple PHP feature that displays the titles of the 10 latest posts from the database. Be aware that it is only an example to provide you the basic ideas and I will provide more real-world examples in the next videos. So if you want to stay up to date, please remember to thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, it will really help me. And it will help you staying up to date with the latest content. So getting back to the project. Uh, the first thing that we need to implement is the model layer that handles the business logic and prepares the data. It defines the post object that looks like here. It is a simple object with the constructor that sets up the title and provides the function accessor to get this title because we need to remember about the encapsulation. The next object that we have is the post PHP, which is the repository for querying the database and retrieving the results. It is a simple repository that makes a SQL query to get the results from the database. I skip this exact point, I just provide you know, some function that does this um, just to show you the results but generally we can make some connections with the SQL database or the REST API or anything more, any persistence layers will be fine. So we get the results with, which is an array of items where, with title set as in one of the keys. We pair from the iterations of the results array and create the new post objects by passing the title as a constructor parameter. This way we get the array of post items as we need it. By encapsulating the infrastructure details like SQL queries like we've done here, the model prevents spreading out the complexities to, through the entire application. If it is complex, it is complex only here. Why it is beneficial? If the project requires switching from an SQL database to, for example, REST API, we only need to update the model. The rest of the application remains in a, unaffected. 
So the next part that we need to handle is the controller, which is responsible for rendering the view. So we create a render function that returns nothing. When the user opens up the application and requests specific results, such as the 10 latest posts, the controller handles this and runs this render function. So uh, to meet the business requirements, it needs to initialize the post repository to fetch the data from the model. Uh, what is great? It doesn't need to know how does the data has been prepared and loaded. Controller doesn't need to know if it has been done with the SQL or with the REST API. It only cares about receiving an array of the post object, which should be handled by the get function of the post repository. I will skip the whole thing about rendering the blade templates, but if you are interested in how does it work, I've created a material about this, about using Laravel Blade in my WordPress project. So if you want to learn something, I insist you to check it out. I will provide the links in the video description. So we take the, our rendering methods and pass the data there. We set the title as a homepage string and we pass the array of items to the view to render them. However, does it need to return the entire post objects? The view only requires the titles, the strings, so there is no need to keep the unnecessary complexity in the view. Of course, we can pass the post object, which is really simple, so there should be, shouldn't be any problems with this. But if we can make the complexity of the view simple and smaller, why not take this? So in this case, we can use array map to iterate through all the objects that we received from the controller, from the repository, and get only the post titles as a string. As you can see, the controller took the results, which seems to be more complicated, make them simpler and updated the view. So we send to the view only what's required and keep the complexity on the view of the view simpler. Of course, using this post object can have uh, some benefits you know, when the projects are larger, but for this simple scenario, we just need to send only the titles. The last part is the view, which is a simple blade file that renders the results we received from the controller. It contains no business logic. Its sole responsibility is to render the data efficiently. So as you can see, we create the simple HTML with head and uh, we put the title object in the title tag of the HTML. Then in the body, we create a simple list and iterates through all the items and display the results. There is nothing more to discuss here. It's really simple. But imagine having to write a raw SQL queries here as a front-end developer to display the results. With this approach, you only request and receive what's needed without worrying about infrastructure details and complexity. The front-end developer working here cares only about displaying the results of the title variable and uh, iterating through the items element. Nothing else matters. They don't need to bother himself or herself about using the REST API, SQL queries or anything more. I won't say that this is the only approach that you should use that is best and solves all the problems. That's not the right direction. Like in the restaurant, even with the best intentions and best processes, something can go wrong and it often goes. However, I've been working with uh, several big players and uh, on the projects with budgets that would allow me to buy a few houses and do nothing for a few years. And one thing that I've learned is when more money is at stake, we can't risk the YOLO work. Such, so such decisions make an impact in such cases. So why to use the MVC pattern? Why I use the MVC pattern in the projects? To reduce the risk of problems, of potential problems, not to prevent them entirely. Based on my understanding, its main purpose is to create a structured environment that minimizes uh, issues and, and maintain a clear organized flow in the app. Also, having the best processes is not often not the right solution too. If you run a food truck that serves uh, simple meals and have a less demanding target group, investing in the waiter doesn't make any sense since you are the chief and you are the waiter at once. The same situation is when you build simple WordPress websites or tiny, tiny features or just tiny or small applications. You don't need to build the whole MVC pattern to display one shortcut. It might be treated as an over engineer. I believe that also pragmatic approach should be really important here. On the other hand, if you plan to run a restaurant with a table, small demanding clients and 
let's say, diverse menu, investing in a good process is essential. Similarly, if you are building long-term solutions, even when they are small, or medium-sized websites or applications that handle more than just displaying a few articles, or plugins with more complex functionality, you should definitely try it out. As with everything, the context matters. So knowing the rules, you should be able to decide if that's the right approach for your project. And my role here is to make it simple. Of course, we can do much more thing here and I could provide more useful examples why this approach matters. But I don't want to make you bored. I believe that most important will be using this pattern in the real world examples, in the real projects. So I will handle this in the new videos, in the next videos videos. Um, if it sounds hard and if you think that it is not necessary to, comp to make such complex projects, I believe and I can assure you that with by creating a basic workflow, you can achieve those results without spending much more time on this. I will show you how to create the base for the WordPress projects that will use this pattern and make your development process easier. Small off topic now, uh, as you can see I've changed a little bit my background uh, and I'm really glad that I can show you this because I think that it is amazing work. It was, it has been made by my wife and I couldn't wait to put this item here. It looks amazing. That's why I was wondering about making some contest for WordPress developers with uh, some really simple questions with this item as a prize, as the winning prize. Let me know in the comments what do you think about this idea? Would you take a part in the simple contest for winning this great thing? <laughs> If so, let me know in the comments. For this material, that's all I want to say. Uh, thank you for staying with me. And if you think that this material was useful for you, just remember to thumbs up because it will help me. And leave a comment. What do you think about the MVC pattern? Do you consider it as a, something that helps you a lot? Or you don't have a time for this in your project? I will be really great, glad to hear your thoughts. One more thing, because I've seen that some of you asked for the a repository for the code where they can download the projects that we create here. But remember that all the links are always put in the video description. I will always put the a link to the blog article that describes all the things that we discussed here, as well as the link to the GitHub repository, which uh, shows the changes in the pull request that we've made and that uh, stores all the projects. So you can go there and download what you need. It's all available publicly in the GitHub repository and on my blog. <laughs> and probably that's all. Thank you for staying with me again and see you next time. Bye bye.